Yo, what is up guys and welcome to another Wild Rift video and this is probably gonna be a really long video because I'm gonna be talking about all of the changes that are coming to patch 4.2 and let me just say if this is Wild Rift then in patch 4.2 they're taking Wild Rift and, and they're twisting it upside down because I'm just gonna quickly summarize what I'm gonna talk about so this, these are videos from Chows an amazing Wild Rift YouTube channel if you want to follow the Wild Rift news. He always publishes uh, Wild Rift news early because he's in PBE. And le let me explain to you guys all the things that I'm going to that I'm going to be talking about in this video. First of all, almost every ADC is getting changed. They're getting fundamental changes, especially Kaisa, like a lot of different changes to champions and you know Olaf as well. A lot of changes are just are a lot of champions are just getting massive changes. Massive changes. So I'm going to watch this video and talk about it. Next up, we have a change to the way that critical damage will, you know, will happen. Again, I'll watch it and explain to you. And items are also getting changed regarding crits. The game is getting changed. You know, the Nexus is getting changed. The turret is getting changed. The minion waves are getting changed. All of that I'm going to be talking about as well. And right here, we have new items and new runes. And a lot of old items are getting reworked, like Nasher's Tooth, like Essence Reefer, like Phantom Nest. I'm gonna talk about all of that too. And then very shortly, I'm gonna talk about something as well. This is a Hextech store, has something to do with the skins. So we'll check all of that out later. So first of all, let's check out the first one, which is gonna be talking about all of the champion changes and we'll see. By the way, there is a link to Chow's in the description. Let me quickly check the volume. Yeah, the volume is fine. There is a link to Chow's YouTube channel in the description. Uh, of course, check it out if you want to make sure you subscribe. But yeah, let's see what he talks about. You can see the subtitles below. Let me see. Yeah, you can read them like this. So here he's going to talk about champion changes. First of all, this one is probably the most important one. And this one is contributing towards Riot making Wild Rift easier. Let's take a look at what the changes. Kai'Sa. Now Kai'Sa's passive has been adjusted. Now you can purchase... Purchase an advanced item. Advanced item meaning a tier 3 item. And you can choose the Wolfie ability. So let me quickly explain to you how it works. If you finish a tier 3 item now, you will automatically be able to upgrade any ability you want. So, of course, that is insane. Now you don't have to do the, you know, the double BF sword, the recurve bow plus the other bow to get the third ability. You don't have to do all of that. You literally just build any item and it's automatically going to allow you to upgrade your abilities. This is, of course, huge. This is such a massive change and a buff to Kai'Sa. It makes her so much easier to play. And I get it, like Riot is trying to make Wild Rift easier. But I'm honestly not that mad about this change because I feel like it's a, it's a good change. Like now you can finally... Honestly, is it a good change though? Because... That was the uniqueness that Kaisa used to have, right? Like you could you could build many different items, many different crazy builds, unlock many different types of abilities. Now it's just much simpler. You can literally just unlock your abilities by buying tier 3 items. That's it. So this change is definitely going to make Kaisa insane. Like insane. Because I don't even think she's getting nerfed. So yeah, let's take a look. Renekton. Take a look at the change of Renekton. His fully charged second ability can break enemies' shields. So when you do the buffed second ability, you know, like each each one of his abilities has a buffed version. You know, the first ability, the buffed version heals more and does more damage. Normally, the buffed second ability only stuns for longer. The buffed third ability shreds the armor. But now, they added something to the second ability. When you buff the second ability, it removes 100% of the enemy shield. This is insane! This is huge! So, like, Renekton is such a good pick into Karma right now, for example. And Renekton destroys Malphite right now. Because, look, they, he even shows Malphite as an example. Like, Malphite always has a shield, right? But as a Renekton, with your buffed second ability, look, look, look at his HP. You instantly go through his shield. Interestingly, it, it does four damage on his shield. I'm not sure why, that may be a bug. But you go through the shield immediately and you'll do full damage to the enemy this is absolutely insane this is insane because against the karma you know against echo oh so good against echo because echo's second ability gives him a massive shield versus shen like let's say shen ults someone and then renekton just completely denies the entire shield so this is a pretty insane change to renekton like i i love it i actually really really love that change honestly so let's take a look Caitlyn, yeah, again, they're making the game easier. So, like, Caitlyn, if you click on her trap, now it used to put it, like, now it puts it on yourself. But now, if you click on a trap, it actually 
uh, prioritizes putting it under an enemy, which is honestly good. Because I remember how annoying it would be. Because, for example, let me give you a good example. If you have a Morgana on your team, your Morgana roots the enemy. As a Caitlyn, it could be very annoying to exactly put your second ability on top of the enemy because you have to aim that tiny little ability and sometimes you would be too late and then of course the enemy is not going to get rooted. But now, if for example, if your Morgana roots the enemy, all you have to do is just auto-aim your second ability. And again, I understand that this is making the game easier, but honestly, these types of changes I really like. Th these ones are good because it's a really, it's a good quality of of life change like now you'll actually properly be able to combo caitlin's abilities without having to to aim it exactly at like a super small spot because the hitbox of caitlin's second ability is very very low so as you can see this is huge this is a huge huge change huge buff so like here you can see he's comboing his third ability with a second ability caitlin's third ability slows the enemy so you'll have a big chance to like third ability and then in, in immediately auto aim your second ability and you'll probably hit that one as well and if you didn't know, by the way, if you if you do this particular combo, wait for it, this one, boom, and boom, the enemy is walked into two traps now, you'll be able to do two empowered attacks. It stacks. It's not like one cancels out the other one. This stacks. So, like, even if the enemy is super far away, you can hit them two times after this combo. This is huge. This is a really massive change. They're doing the same thing for Jinx, like with Jinx as well. Uh, you used to have to aim it you still have to aim it but like same story if you have a morgana or a lux in your team or like any cc and it goes on an enemy you can just auto aim your third ability and it instantly puts it on top of the enemy again i really like this change really good quality of life change this one it's just good because now when you auto aim your third ability it puts it on yourself so like it's 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 annoying it's just annoying so I, this change i really really like as well <laughs> Another change to Jinx when she when she kills an epic. Ooh, 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 ooh. Now this one is interesting. Oh boy, but I wonder how it works. I wonder how it works because it says when you kill an epic monster, you get the the passive. But what if you assist the enemies? You know what I mean? You assist the enemies at taking the epic monster. For example, the enemy jungler is taking the, uh, the dragon. You just hit your second ability on the dragon. Or you ult the dragon. You just do a little bit of damage. And then the enemy secures it. Will you still get your passive? I wonder. I wonder. I wonder if it, if, I wonder if it works like that. I don't think so. But that would be broken if it works like that. Jin. Of course they're doing the same thing to Jin's trap, by the way. You can auto-aim Jin's trap on the enemy, which is great. But Jin is actually getting a buff as well. Jin is getting a buff. Wait for it. Jin, Jin gets a passive buff. So right now, every 15% attack speed gives Jin 2 attack damage. That's really not a lot, but it's like, okay. However, however, now, every 15% attack speed gives him 3 attack damage. What? You know how big that is, guys? Like, it may not seem like a big change, but this is actually pretty insane. Like, in the late game, maybe you have, like, 100% bonus attack speed. That's gonna be, like... That's gonna be, like, how much? Like, 20, 20 bonus AD? No, it's not that much. Is it that much? Yes, it is that much. No, it's not that much. You're gonna get, like, 10 extra, something like that, which is still quite significant. Quite, quite significant to get. Like, look, he actually shows the difference right here. Look at the difference. Oh, this is if he has full damage, I believe. I be yeah, he's looking at late game Jin with a lot of attack speed. He did give him a lot of attack speed there. So that's why the difference is so massive. Like uh, it goes from 536 damage to 693. I believe he built a lot of attack speed here because there's no way it's that much of a change. This is only if you build a lot of attack speed. But late game, you'll feel it. Like that's what I'm trying to say. If you go for rapid fire cannons, storm razor, you know, phantom, there's all these types of attack speed items. You'll feel this change a lot. But when you play lethality gin, you're not going to feel any of like you're actually, this is nothing for lethality gin because lethality gin builds zero attack speed. But of course, you know, I never played Lethality Gen. Look at this change, guys. This one is... It's, I don't know. Let's just watch at it. Let's just look at it. Because Olaf changed a lot. They completely reworked him. So Olaf's passive will be triggered when he's losing health. Correct. Right? Like when he loses health, he gets more attack speed. That's the normal passive. Now, however, 
it provides bonus attack speed, we know that, but it also provides bonus vampirism. This is insane, because bonus vampirism normally gets procced by his second ability. When you activate the second ability, it gives you bonus vampirism based on how low HP you are. Now it's a constant passive. So when you're very low as an Olaf, you will have insane attack speed and insane vampirism. Do you see how this can be insanely powerful, guys? Because now when you're low, you get this crazy attack speed, which was already okay-ish. But now you also get vampirism, so you'll be able to heal up. Combine this with a Sterix Gauge, you know what I mean? You're gonna get a bonus shield. Combine this with a Karma, which is also gonna shield you. You'll, do, you'll have so much sustain. But that's not it. There's more changes to Olaf. Second tier, second skill. So of course they took away the vampirism from the second skill. Look at what they did. Due to physical vampirism being removed to his passive. Now he gains a shield based on his maximum health. See, this one is different based on his maximum health. It doesn't matter how low you are. You're always going to get the same shield. But can you imagine how this is pretty insane? Like this is pretty insane because now Olaf has everything now. He has attack speed. He has vampirism and a shield in his second ability. I mean, what the hell? Like, can you imagine how broken a spirit visage is going to be on Olaf right now? It's going to be so damn powerful. Because he has so much healing, so much, so many barriers. Spirit visage is going to be cracked on this champion. And there is more. He's getting more buffs. I don't even know why. Like, he, he should get... Wait, what? The lower Olaf's health is... Wait, what? He says here, he gains a shield based on his maximum health. But then he says... The lower Olaf's own health is, the larger the shield. So I think he doesn't mean maximum health. I think he means current health. So what I said is not true. And this makes him even more broken. Because when you're low HP, you can now activate your second ability and get an insane shield. Because it skills with how low HP you are. Combine that with a spirit visage. You know, all the healing, all the shielding, all the everything. Ridiculous. I, I like, if they don't nerf something else about Olaf, this will make him ridiculously broken. He's already pretty strong. They're also buffing his third ability. It does more damage to jungle camps now, so he'll have a much faster jungle clear. And there's one more change to Olaf, if that's not enough already. Let's take a look. His ultimate has been reworked. Now the way that the ultimate works is you just activate it. You become unstoppable for 6 seconds. You know, you lose your armor magic resist. And you get, you get movement speed for 1 second when you're moving towards an enemy. And for that 6 seconds, you're just unstoppable. Now... As you can see, his ultimate has a duration of 3 seconds. But hells, that makes him weak. Shut up and watch. However, during these 3 seconds, using basic attacks or, or the third ability will extend the duration. So, the change is basically, his ult is going to be better now in a teamfight and worse to chase an enemy prob basically. And worse to run away. Your ult is not going to be as good to run away anymore. Because you're only unstoppable for 3 seconds. And here Chaos also mentions. In the most ideal state. So when you continuously basic attack the enemy. His ultimate will last for a longer duration. Longer than 6 seconds. Can you imagine an Olaf being unstoppable for longer than 6 seconds in a team fight? Can you just, can you just try to imagine how broken that is? Please. Like, 100%, 100% there is a nerf that he missed. Like, there's no way Olaf is just getting all these buffs and reworks and changes. 100% there must be a nerf. So now let's talk about the jungle changes. Changes of Monster's Magnetism. This one is a really nice quality of life update. You remember when you would, like, a jungle would walk out of its range and, you know, it would run back. But it wouldn't run back into the aggro range. It would run back all the way to the spawn position. Now, they changed that. Like, look, here he messes up. The red buff walks back. Look, it heals up, but you can get it right back if you just step back into its aggro. This is huge, because now, yeah, exactly, it reduces the consequences of the mistakes the jungler makes right now. Because, like, please tell me, how annoying was it when your jungler, when the jungle camp would walk all the way back to the starting position, rather than walking, just walking back to the aggro positions? This is actually a really, really nice quality of life change. Love this change. Next up, jungle, gold, and experience. Instead of the golden experience being reduced by 60% when you take minions, it's now reduced by 70%. 70%, I think. Wait, what? Jungle experience duration? I'm pretty sure that's what it... The golden experience gains for me is reduced by 60%. 
Wait, did I read it wrong? Oh, it just goes from 7 minutes to 7 minutes 30. Okay. Yeah, because that... Huh, I thought it was changed to 70%. I really read it wrong then. Yeah, okay, that's it. So, basically... Uh, this is nice, so the jungler doesn't steal the lane as much, and you really have to focus more on your jungle. They're extending the duration that you get this penalty by 30 seconds. Huh, I really thought I, I, I read that, but I read it wrong in the beginning. Now the Baron change. Oh boy, this one. I don't like this one. This one I don't like. Let, let's take a look. Improvement of the Baron buff. After obtaining the Nasher's buff, the Baron Nasher buff... Uh, so, let me first explain how the old one works. The old one is, you take Baron, you get buffed for like, what, for like two minutes or something, or like one and a half minutes, something like that. If you die, you lose the buff, right? Like, that's how the buff works. And if you're not alive when the Baron gets killed, you also don't get a buff. You only get a buff when you're alive when the Baron gets killed, and you lose it when you die, right? Like, that's how it used to work. Now, now, after obtaining the Baron buff, you will not lose its effect even if you die later on. What? So you can die and respawn and still have the Baron buff. This makes Baron so much stronger because I wonder I wonder if it works like this. Let's say you're dead and the Baron gets killed. Will you get the Baron buff? I think you will. Because if that's the case, then it completely changes the way that changes the way that you want you want to take Baron. Like for example, uh your jungler and your ADC can take Baron, and three of your teammates can just keep the enemies away. If you do that, you know, maybe those three people are gonna die, but then you'll have the Baron, and when they respawn, everyone is gonna have the Baron buff. If it works like that, it would make Baron broken, just saying. If it works like that, it would make Baron absolutely broken. The duration has been slightly reduced, of course, because otherwise it would be just beyond broken. Other changes, let's see. The amount of gold earned from killing minions has been reduced by 5 gold. Okay. Every single minion gives you 5 gold less, but there is more about it. Like, well, let's keep watching. The bounty earned from defeating champions has been reduced by 50 gold. Okay. So you can't snowball as hard by killing enemies. That's fine. So yeah, here. Respawn interval of minion waves has been accelerated. This is why they reduced it by 5 gold. This basically makes you have to be in your lane more rather than ganking. I would say this takes away a little bit of snowballing potential and gives you perhaps more opportunity to farm up. I would say something like that. And the attack range of siege minions has been reduced and the attack range of the range minions has been... In Wait, what? Has been increased. Siege minions has been reduced and the attack range of range minions has been increased. Interesting. I don't really know... Uh, it's like I don't really know what kind of change that's gonna be, but it's gonna change the way waves will work. So you kind of have to change your way of CSing, but we're gonna have to see what this really does. Okay, that's all for this video. There's of course more videos, so let's go to the next video. This is the critical. This is the critical damage change. This one is really really important as well. So let's take a look at this video together. I love how Chaos edits his videos, he's pretending like he's this guy, right? Okay, let's see. Okay, yeah, he's just correcting a mistake from uh, yesterday's video. Yeah, the electrocute, it didn't get changed, they're now just adding something to it, like optimization, yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh yeah, this, this is a video I'll watch after this, by the way. Wait, what? What is the change with Phantom Dancer? Stats of Enders are misstated. This item provides 25 attack damage. There are no issues with other aspects. Okay. Oh, so, okay. We'll, we'll see in the next video. We'll see in that next video. Because in that video, we're going to talk about the items. Let's move on to today's content. Let's see. The critical strike chance for most champions has been reduced. He doesn't mean chance. He means damage, by the way. The critical damage. From 200%, so double, to 175. Okay, so crits are gonna do less damage. Very, very interesting change. So let's see. So like on Jinx, on Vayne, on, on Yasuo and Yone, it goes from 180% to 165. Because Yasuo and Yone do 20% uh, less damage with crits. Because they get double the crit, but they do a little bit less damage. So they're also getting a little bit of punishment. 
By the way, I'm sorry if you hear sound. My mom is cooking, so uh, you can. Ah, no okay. problem. Let me skip that. Let's take a look. Jin and Senna remain the same. By the way, this is important. Let's let's go back. Jin and Senna remain the same. It's very very important. So like they're not getting the nerf. So basically, your crits will do less damage. Like that, that's the change. Most marksmen have received attack speed buffs, however. This is to complement for it. So like as you can see, Caitlyn is getting a 0.6% attack speed buffs to, to kind of compensate for the crit. Ezreal is not... Wait. Ezreal, Jin, Senna, and Vayne are not getting it. They're just adjusting a lot of ADCs. A lot of adjustments. But like, it's it's a lot, a lot of difference. And yeah, ADCs like Akshan or like range shapes like Akshan and Graves, they're not getting any changes for it. Infinity Edge is getting changed as well. Because the crit, the way that crit works has been changed, Infinity Edge is also getting changed. Let's see. The stats of Infinity Edge have been adjusted. So, in, of course, instead of it... Uh, it still buffs your crit damage by 30%. It used to bring it from 200 to 230. Now it brings it from 175 to 205. I wonder how it works with Yasuo though now. And with Jin and Senna. I think it would still be the same, but like, maybe it just it should just say that it increases your crit chance by 30%. Yeah, the effective has been reduced, correct, but that's fine, because Infinity Edge was a pretty broken item anyways. Uh, tier 1 and Tier 2 boots don't have active effects anymore. This is also actually a pretty important change. A lot of people never used boots, which is pretty stupid, but now it's fine. Like, again, they're making the game easier. Now, you know, your, your first and second ability don't have active effects anymore. Yet again, they're making the game easier. Hey, what kind of a joke did he make? What? Rushing back to your lane. Removing it is still disappointing for me. Sometimes I just think water deserves. <laughs> okay, Chaz. Got it. <laughs> Okay, that's all for this video. Now let's move on to the next video, which is, in my opinion, going to be the most interesting one. This is going to be talking about... Actually, is it this one or this... No, okay, the new items video is more interesting. But this one is also really important. Let's take a look at it. I will bring some game environment changes today. Now, game environments have used changes. So let us take a look on these changes. Sure. Uh, turrets and Nexus. Okay. Changes to turrets... The, the HPs, outer turret still has 3000 HP, which is the first turret, Th that's like the first turret. The inner turret, which is the middle turret, has three th now 3000 instead of 3500. Every, basically every turret has less HP. So, split pushing becomes better, and just pushing in general becomes better, okay? Unless they're getting like an armor buff or something. Turret and Nexus has 50% armor penetration? Oh really? What? I didn't know that. Is that something new or what? So like if you build armor, they penetrate 50% of your armor. Is that new? Or was that always the case? Feel like this may be new. Because like a champion with a lot of armor could easily tank turret shots. But if this is new, this is big actually. This doesn't allow like a Garen to tank as much or like a Mundo to tank as much. Because the turret will have armor penetration. I think this is new. Pretty sure this is new. Inhibited turrets remove counter push. What is this? When two turrets are destroyed in 45 seconds, the inhibited turrets will gain 15% damage reduction, which lasts 30 seconds. When a counter push and anti vector mechanic stacks, wait, when the counter push and anti vector mechanics stack, defensive turrets can gain up to 80% damage reduction. What? When two turrets are destroyed in 45 seconds, the inhibited turret will gain 15% damage reduction. When the counter push and anti vector mechanics stack. Oh! This is counter push. And there's also an anti backdoor mechanic. Anti backdoor, which gives the, the golden shield to the turrets or the nexus. Um, and yeah, basically, then they're not gonna be able to take turrets. This is actually a really, really nice change. So, like, when you die in the late game, this could actually defend you from losing the game. So that's pretty. Oh, never mind. This is removed after 18 minutes of the game, it seems like. Okay, we'll see. We'll see what it does. <coughs> but basically, early on, oh, changes to Nexus anti backdoor. What is this? Anti backdoor. Oh, instead of it weakening after 18 minutes, it's removed. There is no more anti backdoor after 18 minutes. Okay, interesting. So after 18 minutes, you can just end the game. But before 18 minutes, yeah. Look this. You see that? This is the this is the counter push. When an inhibitor turret is destroyed, 
The Nexus gains a shield equivalent to 100% of its total health, which lasts for 20 seconds. Oof. This effect only occurs before... Wow, this is actually massive. So like before 18 minutes, it's going to be really hard for the enemies to end the game. Wow. If they, if they like push multiple turrets at the same time. Interesting. Okay, now we have Dragon and Elder Dragon changes. Uh, Elemental and Elder Dragon. Let's see. Ice Dragon says... Ice Dragon is the new dragon. You gain ability haste from the Ice Dragon. 7 ability haste, 14 or 28, depending on how many dragons you have. Interesting. Initial health of the... <coughs> the elemental dragons will have 4000 HP instead of 5000 HP. So it's much easier to take them. Health grows per level, yeah. Respawn time of the elemental dragon. Instead of 5 minutes, it's now 4.5 minutes. So more dragons. Okay, I like that. I actually like that. So there's more to do during the game. Despawn time of the elemental dragon. What is this? If Drake engaged in combat, the disappearance time will be delayed. With a maximum delay of 30 seconds, 20 seconds. Okay, this is not that big of a change. But like after 17 minutes 30, it will be removed, it seems like, for the Elder Dragon. I think that's what it says. Spawn time, yeah, spawn time of the Elder Dragon, instead of it being 20 minutes, 18 minutes now. Also like that. It accelerates the game. But this is an indirect nerf to late game champions. You need to understand that. Because now you have 2 minutes less to farm up for the all important Elder Dragon. This is definitely a nerf to late game champions. Rift Herald and Baron Nashor. Let's see. <coughs> Only one Rift Herald per game. What? It won't respawn after being killed. Okay. Only one? I actually really liked two Heralds. Not gonna lie. It was really, really nice change. Don't really like that there's only one now. This one time of Drift Herald, instead of 12 minutes, 11.30. But I don't like that there is only one, because like... Yeah, well, whatever. Ooh, Rift Herald. Wait, instead of it doing... It does more damage now, based on your level. Initial sp And the Baron spawns faster, of course, yeah. So yeah, this is a complete nerf to late game champions. This is like a complete slap in the face for late game champions. Look at that, the initial health of the Baron goes to 9,000. Instead of 11.8 thousand, which makes it much easier to take. Wow. Damn, and health growth has been decreased, so Baron is not going to be as tanky anymore. Oof. This really incentivizes aggressive play, doesn't incentivize just waiting around. <coughs> so again, this is all a slap in the face to late game champions. Oof. The team buff duration, instead of 2 minutes, goes to 1 minute 40. Makes sense, because of that stupid change that they did to it. Well, like The crazy change where if you're dead, you'll still have the Baron buff. So it makes sense that they're reducing the duration. Evolved red and blue buff, okay? Uh, spawn time of... Okay, it spawn instead of it spawning on 7 minutes, it now spawns on 7 minutes 30, okay? Real time... What is this? Summoners can understand the events of the entire game. Oh, nice! Actually... You see that? There's a timeline. There's literally a timeline, so you can see what's coming. Actually, that is sweet. That is so nice, actually. So you can see when turret plating stops, when this stops, when that stops, when the Baron spawns, you know, when the anti-backdoor kicks in and all that kind of stuff. Actually, that's nice. That's really nice, actually. Wow. I love that. Yeah, nice. Now let's go to the most important video, guys. This one is the biggest. This is the biggest change. This is going to be talking about new items, new runes, and the changes to old items. So let's see. This is this is crazy. I actually haven't watched this video yet, but I've just heard about it. But it's going to be my first time reaction to it. Okay, what is this? This is one of the new items. Let's see when he shows the English version. Immortal Shield Bow. 3,200 gold. It gives you 40 attack damage, 25% crit chance, 15% attack speed, and 5% vampirism. That's not a lot of vamp, but that's still 5%. It has a lifeline. <coughs> um, lifeline is the same passive as the passive from Sterix Gage, from Phantom Dancer, from Malf Mormortius, by the way. So this is the same. So you cannot build this item with a Phantom Dancer, or maybe Phantom Dancer changed, but you cannot build this with a Sterix Gage. If you would take damage, that would reduce you below 35% of your maximum health. You first gain a shield that absorbs 200 plus 5 damage per 1% critical strike chance. Oh, if you have 100% crit, 
you'll get 200, you get a shield from 700. If you have 25% uh, crit, you get 25 times 5 is 125, is 325 shield. So the more crit you have, the bigger the shield, okay? The shield lasts for 5 seconds, 90 second cooldown. And if you trigger lifeline, you get 10% bonus physical vampirism. Okay, it's actually pretty big. This is actually huge for Yasuo and Yone. Oh my god, this is actually insane item for Yasuo and Yone. I actually, wow, this I, I actually think this is gonna be broken. I really think this item will be broken on Yasuo and Yone. How about Senna? Maybe this item is playable on Senna as well, because Senna also gets a lot of crit. But 100% on Yasuo and Yone, actually on Trindamir. Maybe it's also broken on Trindamir. It's actually really broken on Trindamir, because he also gets really a lot of crit. Oof! Wait a minute, this item is gonna be like so good in, with Trindamir, Yasuo, and Yone. We'll see, we'll see, but I think it's gonna be insanely powerful. This is the Collector. I'm, I'm curious to see what the stats are of Collector, let's see. It gives you 40 attack damage and 25% crit. Th those are not very high stats. But it also gives you 10 armor penetration, which is great. Death and taxes. If you deal damage <coughs> that leaves an enemy champion's health below 5%, you execute them. So this is pretty insane on Samira, you know? Samira, Jin, Misfortune. And if you kill an enemy champion, it provides an additional 25 gold. Not that much gold, but it's okay. It's like, okay. But it's mostly about the executing below 5% health. I actually think this item is kind of weak, maybe? Is it though? 40 attack damage, 25% crit, 10 armor penetration, and then the 5%, and the gold, of course. Is it weak? It, actually, it's a cheap item, never mind. Never mind, this item is actually strong, because it only costs 2,900 gold. It's 300 gold cheaper than most items. Then it's actually a good item. It's actually, that is actually an insane item. Wait a minute. If it's that cheap, it's really, really strong. Wow. Wow, actually, wow. It's pretty crazy. What is this? What the hell is this? Oh, it's a component. Yeah, it's a component. It gives you 25 attack damage, 10% attack speed. And that's it. It's just a new component. Okay, nothing interesting. And that's another component, I think. Magic, gain 20 attack damage or... What? Oh, this builds through the Nasher's Tooth. It gives you 20 attack damage or 40 ability power. Adaptive. Okay. Phantom Dancer. So remember in the pre previous video, he mentioned that Phantom Dancer, in addition to giving attack speed and crit, it also gives you 25 attack damage. So the item costs increased by 100. The item costs 2,900. It gives you 25 attack damage, 25% crit, 35% attack speed, 5% movement speed, and after basic attacking an enemy, you gain an additional 7% movement speed. It does not stack. After 4 basic attacks, you gain an additional 30% attack speed. However, the item doesn't give you a shield anymore. It doesn't give you lifeline. Hmm. What do I think about this item? Phantom Dancer. I think this item is going to be absolutely cracked on vain. Because it gives you movement speed and attack speed. The only two stats Vayne needs. After 4 basic attacks, you get 30% bonus attack speed. And you're constantly, you know, you constantly have 5% movement speed. And another 7%. Wow, this item is crazy actually. It's actually pretty crazy. Like on Vayne especially, as I said. Maybe on Zaya. I think on Zaya it's going to be utterly insane as well on Zaya. Because, like, Zaya loves to have attack speed and movement speed as well. So, Zaya, Vayne, anyone else? But, interesting. I actually like this change. Instead of it having a lifeline, I really like this change, actually. Let's see. What? Is, oh, this is Essence Reefer. Let's see. What are you doing to Essence Reefer? The item now costs 3,050, which is 200 gold cheaper. Gives you 40 attack damage. 25% critical strike. Chance. 20 ability haste, which is pretty good. And now, energize. Oh, it, it has an energize effect? Empowers your next ability or basic attack, increasing damage by up to 30% based on critical strike chance. 
empowering your next ability or basic attack increasing the damage by up to 30 percent based on the critical strike chance so if you have a hundred percent crit it increases the damage of your next ability by 30 percent if you only have this item if you only have an essence reefer it only increases the damage by seven and a half percent which is not a lot there's a six second cooldown basic attacks against champions oh basic attacks against champions reduce the cooldown by one second i was immediately thinking about ezreal by the way because with ezreal your first ability of course does a lot of damage and your first ability will also reduce the cooldown but i don't think this will be a i don't think this will be a core item for ezreal i mean what about crit ezreal uh, i don't know i don't think so because 30% is really not that much. Hmm. But on Misfortune, for example, this will be really, really good. How about Jin? Hmm, I don't know, man. I only think this will be viable on Misfortune, because Misfortune's first ability is a lot of basic attacks. And you'll be able to constantly proc this item. Oh, yeah, this item also siphons mana. It restores 3% missing mana for every basic attack. I don't know what to think about this item. I, I don't know. I actually really don't know. Misfor like, only Misfortune is, is... I'm only thinking about Misfortune. Maybe Lucian, actually. Actually, Lucian, yeah. Because Lucian has double basic attacks, so he'll be constantly able to utilize this item. So I think this will be a really good Lucian item, too. Okay, interesting change. We're gonna have to see if it's gonna be an Ezreal item. We're gonna have to see. I don't think so. I don't think so, but we're gonna have to see. Mana Mune. What are they changing to Mana Mune? It's still the same build. 25 attack damage, 300 max mana, 20 ability haste, gain attack damage equal to 1.5% max mana, refunds 15%. That's the same. Increase max mana by 10 every attack. That's the same. Caps of 10 mana, transforming, trigger. Wait, but that's the same. What the hell? That's exactly the same. Is Mura mana getting changed? Oh, Mura mana is probably getting changed. Stats buffed. Can trigger with ability attack damage increased. Okay, let's see. It still gives you the same stats, only more mana. You still gain attack damage equal to 1.5% max mana, refunds 15%. When basic attacking hits an enemy champion, you consume 2.5% of your current mana and deal additional physical damage. Has this always been 2.5% or was this 2%? I'm not sure. But, uh, uh, equal to the amount consumed. When dealing damage to enemy champions with abilities, consume 4% of your current mana and deal plus 6 additional physical damage. Equal to the consumed amount of mana. I don't know what the exact number you can say, but what I'm what I'm getting out of this is even when you use abilities, these abilities are gonna consume mana and deal bonus damage. So basically, the more mana you have, the crazier this item will get. So on Ezreal, this will be cracked. On Corky, this will be insane. On Kane, actually, wait a minute. On Kane, this will be so good. Kane jungle. Every time you're consuming your mana and doing bonus damage, not only with basic attacks, but also with abilities. This effect will only trigger when, you re when your remaining mana is above 20%. Each individual ability can only trigger this effect once against the same champion. But there must be a cooldown for it. Because otherwise it won't work with your second ability or with your first ability on Ezreal. This is actually a really important addition. Each individual ability can only trigger this effect once against the same champion. This is a really important addition actually. Because how will it work with Ezreal? Actually, Ezreal's first ability already already is a basic attack. So it will already proc the first it will already proc the damage. But will it also proc the other one? Because it's also an ability. It's a bit it's it it applies on hit effects, but it's also an ability. So will it do 2.5% of your current mana plus 4%? We'll see. And then the second attack you do doesn't use the 4% because it only triggers once for the same champion. I don't know. We'll see. But this feels like the item will be insanely strong. Like really, really strong. This will make the item really strong. Also with Lucian. Okay, I'm hearing a lot of people talk about Nasher's Tooth changes. So let's see what it actually is. Nasher's Tooth is cheaper now. 3000 gold. Gives you 45% attack speed. 20 ability haste. And oh, it's adaptive now. You gain either 30 attack damage or 60 ability power. It used to be 80 ability power, by the way, so they reduced that number. 30 attack damage is also not a lot, so let's see what it also has to offer. Your basic attacks do 15 plus 25% bonus attack damage plus 25% ability power. 
as bonus magic as bonus magic damage. Okay. Hmm, what the hell? Who would this be good on? By the way, it only counts bonus attack damage. Not your total attack damage. This is really important because now it's not going to be good on champions that just have... Like Senna, for example. Because I think Senna's passive adds attack damage to her, but it's not bonus attack damage. So it's not like Nasher's Tooth will count all that attack damage that she has. It only counts attack damage that you either get from items that you bought or from, from your teammates' abilities. For example, Janna's third ability gives bonus attack damage. That also counts. But like if you if your champion, like as I said, like like Senna, for example, I don't think that one counts. But who would this be good on? I mean, obviously kill. But I don't know. Honestly, this feels does is this a nerf? How much like I don't really know what the old Nash's tooth was. Like, how much did it skill? Because it gave you 80 ability power, but how how much damage did the basic attacks do with the old Nash's tooth? I'm really not sure. But what they're saying now is you can build Nasher's Tooth with an attack damage champion as well. So like Kai'Sa, for example, you can build Nasher's Tooth. And it's just going to give you attack damage. And it's going to give you a lot of attacks. Nasher's Tooth is just going to be good on, on, on hit champions. So like, ooh, Twisted Fate, actually. Oh, baby, Twisted Fate. When you go for full on hit Twisted Fate, Nasher's Tooth is going to be cracked on him right now. We'll see. I don't know if I like this change. I actually really like this item being like an exclusive magic damage item, but we'll see what it what it's gonna do. I can't really predict too much about it. Oh, we're getting new runes. Uh, good for late now. Consider as a big buff. What? Electrocute cooldown twenty to thirteen. Yes. Yeah, but that's how it always used to be. He he corrected this mistake. New runes look like super broken runes. What is this? Toughness. Oh, Hunter Titan gets removed. Okay. You gain 10% tenacity. When affected by crowd control, gain 30, 16 to 30 bonus armor and magic resist, depending on level, for one and a half seconds. The duration is refreshed with each consecutive instant of crowd control. Wow. What? You instantly gain 10 tenacity, 10 percent tenacity, and you get that bonus armor and magic resist whenever you get stunned or CC'd or like any slow or anything. What? Isn't that like ultra broken against CC? Like, can you have against... Wait, against Atrox, for example. Atrox constantly knocks you up and his second ability as well. You will have constant bonus armor and magic resist against Atrox. And 30 is a lot, by the way. Like, conditioning doesn't even give you 30 in the late game. And remember, this item also gives you 10% tenacity. And early game, 16 armor and magic is also a lot. That's a lot. That's like really a lot. I'm not sure if that's balanced actually, wow. It's really crazy, really, really crazy. Uh, Hunter Genius is getting removed. And now is now a rune called Transcendence is getting added. Transcendence at the following levels gains the following bonuses. At level one, you gain six ability haste. At level six, gain an additional six ability haste. So it's gonna be 12. At level 11, after hitting an enemy champion with a basic ability, reduce the cooldown of that ability by 15%. So it doesn't work with your ultimate, only with a basic ability, and this has an 8 second cooldown. Hmm. This item is more late game friendly, and less early game stomping friendly. Because Hunter Genius used to give you 2.5 ability haste for each enemy you're killing, so you had the potential to get a lot of ability haste very early on in the game. This item, however, is a safer item. Like at level 6, you'll have 12 ability haste, which is quite a lot. And then at level 11, you get that additional bonus, which, which reduces the cooldown of your basic ability. Interesting. Actually, yeah, this is, I would definitely say this item is better. Because at level 6, you're already getting stats that are all that are close to the maximum potential of the hunter genius like you could have zero kills and you're still getting almost almost the maximum potential of, of hunter genius it's way better than hunter genius here is the comparison of attack ranges for marksman wait what what do you mean attack ranges for marksman are they getting increased huh look they're getting the range is getting increased for marksman what the hell? Why? By now. Why? Wait, let me see. Jace. 
Wait, this one is not getting changed, is it? Yeah, this one is not getting buffed. Yeah, Jace and Graves don't have any changes, yeah. This buff is specifically for Marksman. I wonder if Akshan gets a buff as well. How did he find this? That's crazy, actually. Wow! Yeah, Chaz, you deserve that like on every video of yours. Let me just quickly give you a like on everything. Those videos are amazing. Let's also quickly watch the last video, which is talking about the new skins. Uh, talking about a new way of obtaining skins. Let's take a look at it. Patch 4.2 has a rework to the Hextech store. Uh, Global server also launched the Hextech store, okay. Let me introduce the new Hextech store. First of all, the brand new Hextech store allows you to obtain various rewards through Hextech chests. There's also a low chance to get a skin directly from Hextech chest. How do you get these keys though? Do you just get them from the game or do you have to buy them? Each time you open Hextech chest, can get two rewards. One of them will be at least a skin fragment. Oh, there will be a certain amount of orange essence. So I think with the skin fragment, if you have enough orange essence, you can unlock a skin with it. Skin fragments can be forged into permanent skins in Hextech Workshop. Okay. You need a certain amount of silver stardust to forge a permanent skin. I don't, silver stardust? Is that the blue modes? Or is that something else? Silver stardust can be obtained. Oh, dismantling skin fragments. So if you don't want the skin, you can dismantle it. Okay. Hmm. In addition, orange essence can be used to redeem rewards in the Hextech store. You can get skins. Yeah. I just wonder if this will be a nice way of getting skins. Like, basically, if you don't want to spend money, like, you would be able to just get, like, one skin every few months. I think that would be a good addition to the game. So, it, like, skins would still be something you, you, you would have to pay for. But, like, at the very least, like, you'll be able to get one skin every few months. You know what I mean? I think that would be a really good really good thing because also it, it encourages players more to pay for skins because then they can you know they can enjoy the skin and then they may want to get more skins because they're able to enjoy that one skin all right so that is it for the video let me know your thoughts in the description uh, description in the comments the video was 47 minutes long i really hope you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah i'll see you all in the next wild video bye bye